meeting to order. If everybody would please rise for the invocation read by uh, Trustee Cook. Invocation this evening from Recon United Methodist Church. Loving God, grant to us an awareness of your presence and an understanding of your purpose in order that we may better serve you by caring for the people in our charge with clarity, compassion, and courage. For it is in your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Everybody please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Porter would note that all three trustees are present. Approval of minutes from June 6, 2019. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? Yeah, I have a, I have a couple of comments. Um, I, the draft I asked to be changed, and it was changed, so that uh, uh, I was mentioned as a, a person acknowledging the 75th anniversary of D-Day. I thank Mr. Bedford and Mr. Porter for that. But there was something in here where on the second page, Mr. Weedman stated that Mr. James was misinformed that HB 166 does not mention TIF financing, but that he does support the bill. I just want to clarify something. Actually, Mr. James, if you're listening to the audio, you see the video was not misinformed. In all due respect, Mr. Weedman was misinformed that Mr. James never mentioned TIF financing. Uh, there's one other comment, and I mentioned it to uh, Beth today, and I'll, and I'll pass it on to uh, Mr. Bickford. The resident's comment, he went on to complain about the budget. Uh, I think the word complain is very negative, and uh, I'd like to see us <coughs> stay away from uh, that kind of language. It's uh, the right of a citizen to make a remark, to make comments, and we welcome those comments. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Mr. Porter? Um, Mr. LaBarber? Aye. Mr. Connor? Aye. Mr. Weed? Aye. Okay, next we have comments. Comments from residents? Anybody signed up here? Yeah, I, think, Dr. Donald, I think most of these are probably for the public hearing. Uh, Mr. Tranner? You want to speak now? Kevin, Greg, Shelley, Josh? Mr. James. Yes. Good evening again, gentlemen. Tom James at 5784 Whitechapel Drive. A few things I wanted to speak about tonight. I'm sorry, Mr. Wigman was going to All right. Uh, one of them is. Sorry, one of them is what uh, Mr. LaBarbera just mentioned. The minutes from last month. I've, I've seen the draft as well published on the website. Um, and, and I'd like to actually complain this month. Uh, I don't think I was complaining last month, but I complained about the accuracy of the minutes where they know, as Mr. LaBarbera said, that I complained about the budget as to the festival. As you gentlemen will recall, I asked whether there was a budget for the festival, because apparently there wasn't one yet just a few weeks beforehand, and I was quite concerned that there was still no fiscal control over the budget. Uh, I understand it's under much better control than in years past, so it will cost to the township only about $100,000, and maybe even less this year, instead of the $150,000 plus it cost a few years ago. But categorizing resident comments and questions as, as complaining about things puts an unfriendly spin on it, certainly, and would discourage resident comments in the future. I, I don't know if that's the goal of whoever's preparing the minutes. I don't know if Mr. Porter's the one preparing them, or if Mr. Bickford and uh, Beth are doing that. But uh, I, I am complaining about being characterized as complaining. <laughs> Perhaps it's a bit ironic here. Um, the other thing, though, which Mr. LaBarber also raised, is Mr. Wheatman. Last month, I read from the House passed budget bill, which, as you know, had nothing to do with TIFs. You and I were both under the misimpression the month before that there was going to be a change in the TIF law that I pointed out then hadn't been published, and you said you were familiar with it, and it only affected large urban townships. As it turns out, two months ago, neither of us was right about that, but last month I never mentioned TIFs. But you told me that I needed to do my homework 
and I needed to better educate myself. Do you have anything further to say about that? No, this is not a question and answer session here. This is your comments. You feel free to make your comments, and we're not going to take questions here. The board is not going to take time out of questions. Understood. Well, then I will Mr. simply say. Can I just make a yeah. statement? <clears throat> and with all due respect, everybody, I am relatively new um, monitoring these proceedings for uh, Mr. Miller, the law director. But um, in every setting that I have been in, in a council trustee setting, it is a comment that is made. Often it's timed. I don't think it's timed here. But in front of the city of Cincinnati, it's a two-minute com two comment section. Often without the full council there, I do think it's a uh, matter of consideration. They allow four or five members of council to be out, but they don't require the full body. Um, the jurisdiction where I'm the law director, uh, we limit it to three minutes, um, and it's not a Q&A. It, it's simply a comment. Um, opportunity for the public. So I would caution people on both sides of the aisle, so to speak, uh, whether it be council members or board members or residents, that this is merely an opportunity to exercise your right to comment. It's not an opportunity to engage in a Q&A or uh, hopefully not a debate. Um, so if there is a need for a Q&A, if there's a need to have a discussion with one of the trustees or one of the administrative uh, officers, you're welcome to do that, but the board meetings and workshops are not the place for that. And I apologize if I've overstepped my bounds, but that is the way I've always been trained that the things are run. And uh, I was trained by Judge McClain, um, and I believe that that is the appropriate way to deal with the public comment section. Um, it is a comment, it's not a Q&A, it's not a debate. So Mr. James, with all due respect, make your comments, and then if you would please move on. I understood. The, the practice here has been otherwise, which is why I did ask the question. I was the, my comment is, since it turns out I was not the one misinformed and had done my homework and someone else had prepared remarks to deliver and had not listened to what I said, perhaps I was due an apology. But that is something that could happen at some other time. The other comments I have are um, zoning signs are, are out now on a few parcels of land that are subject to zoning hearings currently, including one on Coogler Mill Road and actually another on Coogler Mill Road, which is a, which is a church down here. And I'd like to uh, praise the township and Mr. Bickford and Mr. Holford for finally getting those signs out. I've been asking for them to be put out for about seven months now and have been told at various times, as I noted last month, that we don't have signs, we do have signs, the signs are broken, the signs are out, the signs are definitely out, someone told me the signs are out, who told you that we don't have signs? Well, now we finally do have signs, so that's a nice improvement. It provides good notice to the residents. Uh, a couple other comments. There's the proposal for the maintenance building uh, to be built behind this building and a move in the salt dome. I don't know if the trustees have considered this. I, I can't see that it has been considered in an open meeting, at least, uh, from looking through the minutes, but I would urge the trustees to consider an alternate location entirely for that, perhaps the northern end of Bechtold Park, there's already a maintenance building there, but north of that, there's a cleared area that has a, a uh, doggy bag dispenser there, and then some woods, and then an entirely industrial area behind it. That might be a better suited location for industrial type warehouse maintenance shed buildings and a salt dome. It's no more inconvenient to the rest of the community than this space is behind us. But behind us, we have one of the few open green spaces in the township right now. That space would be ideally suited for a park with a walking path around it, maintaining the field that's used for soccer there now, adding some parking and, and office space onto this building if needed for further administrative use. But that would really be the best use of that and would be the best use for the community for that. So I would urge the trustees to consider that before moving ahead with any project for the building. To the extent plans are already drawn up for buildings, uh, I haven't studied them in great detail myself, but I understand it's a freestanding building I would expect it's relatively portable. The lay of the land under it may have changed a bit, but the building design itself, if it works here, likely would work there too. Um, so I would urge the trustees to consider that and then bring a nice green space and some parkland to the community here. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anybody else on the list? Mr. Ford. Standish Fortin 12137 Macaulay Road, which is in the northern segment of Sycamore Township. And 
Deepak, I would respectfully disagree with your interpretation. Uh, I've been to other township meetings where, in fact, the trustees have an open dialogue with the individuals that they represent. So perhaps they're, perhaps they're doing it wrong, but I can tell you this: um, the definition of public comments is you comment. It's not a question and answer. It's not an opportunity to debate. So. With all due respect, I would tell you that perhaps those other townships are doing it wrong. I understand and I appreciate the discourse, but that's the entire purpose of having public meetings so that we can't actually have discourse. So I appreciate you continuing that. Well, you can certainly have discourse, um, and that's the point I was trying to make is that you can, you can contact a trustee, you can contact the administration. <clears throat> but the pur pur purpose of this meeting is to get through business of the township. It's not to put somebody on camera and provide them an opportunity to campaign. It's not an opportunity to get on the soapbox and talk about things that you think might play well to other constituents. Um, all of that gets decided in the voting group. Here it's an opportunity to make public comments. And that's it. No Q&A, no debating. Okay, well, I appreciate your opinion regarding campaigns that no one has brought up yet. Um, the minutes that I was asking questions about, um, or going to ask questions about, which I will ask, they don't have to be answered, uh, but I asked questions last meeting regarding the finances of the township, which are not political. They are an objective number, black and white. And I asked for a simple answer after doing public records requests as a citizen to understand the tax dollars and the tax revenue and the position of the township financially as to how much the township has in assets. A simple question should be readily available to anyone, especially a tax paying resident, on the website updated monthly and I've been unable to obtain that even through public records requests. Um, that is not reflected in the minutes. I don't know who prepares the minutes, but to not actually include those numbers in the minutes is extremely disrespectful to the taxpayers. So I encourage the review of the minutes to actually contain important information for the citizens to review, especially if they cannot be here. Thank you. I did have a question um, with regard to the use of Sycamore Township logos. Um, but as I am not permitted to ask a question, I will just uh, pose it here and then forward via email as to what the policy is for using the Sycamore Township logo um, on non-Sycamore Township uh, literature and uh, at non-Sycamore Township events. So thank you for your service all. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, uh, next item is Sheriff Patrol Report. Uh, good evening, board. Nothing, uh, not a whole lot to report. Uh, we're all set in terms of the security details of the festival this weekend. Everything's been arranged and taken care of. I've submitted the names and everything to uh, Debbie Campbell, and then I'll, uh, I'll confirm everything with her on Monday morning. Uh, just a quick, quick snapshot of what's going on in the township. Uh, we're responding to 1,000 calls plus per month, calls for service, dispatch calls. Uh, so far, in the category of incidents that have been self-initiated, we're at 600 plus. That's traffic stops, business checks, field, field interrogations, things of that nature. So, when we have uh, a month where both the numbers in both of those categories are, are high, we're talking about upwards of 2,000 just related incidents per month. Uh, Sycamore Township deputies have investigated 500 auto crashes in the, in the township for six months a year. Interestingly, the traffic safety unit, they have investigated an additional 119 crashes over and above what your contract part is taking. So, we've got good news from the chief today. Uh, appears like uh, our calls for uh, <coughs> heroin overdoses are on a bit of a downturn here recently, which is it's great news. But we're, we're pretty busy. Uh, if you'd like to talk about the whole basketball hoop issue, we can. I know that it's worthy of your time here tonight. The gentleman that was going to come and voice his concerns is not here. Uh, I still recommend we, we maintain a soft approach. We are working with neighbors, working with parents, and those conversations have been positive and productive.
productive. Uh, this, this is a back burner issue. This is not a primary issue. I, I think in the, in, the, um, in the past meetings, the board has uh, agreed unanimously, I believe, that the um, that they can use these boots, but they can't leave them there, correct? Because they're portable, right? Correct. It's not, a, it's not a permanent structure. Right. So they could use them, but when they're done using them, they got to bring them out of the right away. Certainly. We've had multiple calls, and uh, there was a maybe a suggestion that we weren't responding. That's that's not accurate. Uh, we've had multiple calls. In some cases, when the officers arrive, kids are gone. They're they're finished. They've gone elsewhere. In other cases, when we have is the hoop still there? Or is it moved? Uh, yes and no, depending on okay. you know a case by case basis. In other cases, we've we've found kids playing basketball on the street. We've said, hey guys, you need to take it up, take it on the sidewalk, and they've complied. Uh, they have you know without incident. The idea that we're going to roll up into these neighborhoods and start handing out citations for this sort of thing is we're not going to be that heavy handed. And uh, I don't want to burn my source, but I've got it on pretty good authority. The juvenile division of the prosecutor's office, they're, they're handling 10,000 juvenile court cases a year, three years running. Um, if we start citing 12 year olds to juvenile court for pedestrian violations, it's not going to be taken seriously. It'll be a cost remit, and the kid will be cut loose. And it's, it, it, I think it would be a tremendous waste, waste of resources. We've all received a number of emails from one, one individual. One individual, yes. Now, have you had to place from other people in the neighborhood? Other Not that have been voiced to me or brought to my attention because personally. Just that he says people are complaining to him. And yes. And nobody to you. Just the one. And, and the bigger issue for me is I was discussing with somebody in the lobby. Um, that individual has gone and confronted neighbors and confronted parents, and that has been met with hostility. So my worry is that this will deteriorate, it'll go way past the placement of a basketball hoop, and we'll have an assault or a menacing case or something like that, and that's obviously not what we want. So uh, we had a conversation with that individual Tuesday, there was a lot of denial, as you might imagine. Uh, but uh, we're closely monitoring the situation, and again, it's, it's gonna be a case-by-case -case basis with a soft approach, and we'll continue and so far, these conversations have been positive as well. And Mr. Williams said, we had agreed on that. <coughs> they can play in the streets as long as they put it back. And, uh, it's, it's one of those things that happens. Uh, you know, technically, by the letter of the law, is it legal? Not, not really. It's a pedestrian violation. But in the spirit of the law, who didn't grow up playing stickball or, or, or basketball on the street or outside at the end of the driveway or something like that? So okay. that's all I got. Okay, any questions? EMS and fire report. Uh, I got the month report sent out today, and uh, we'll have it posted on the website tomorrow for public review. Um, that, and the workshop I had mentioned about the radios that we need for the communicate with Kenwood Town Center and also Jewish Hospital and some of the other places. And uh, we did get the pricing on that, and I gave it to Tracy for the PO. Okay. On that. So, uh, and the only other thing I got is. Um, for some reason, the power out is out at the uh, carousel. I've already wrote. I don't know. That's, yeah, that's one thing. <laughs> so it, it scares me because history shows that when when those places do that, the power goes out. There's usually a fire in the place. So it, it could happen. It most likely will. Yeah. But I hope not. <laughs> um, so I don't know what's going on. We just found out today. Doug went down with the uh, state fire marshal to do inspection on the hotel that they do annually and they found that the place is a ghost town and there's no power, there's no nothing. So that's kind of weird. Harry, can you reach out to uh, Alfred who owns that property? Yeah. I'm trying to find a meeting with him. Do you? Okay. But it's about another matter, but I, I would definitely be yeah. happy to consider that. We need to find out what's going on there. Yeah. Um, there's no cars in the lot where normally we have the, the normal people that are staying there. Right. <laughs> I got a feeling that the that the that the juice is turned off because they didn't pay. That's what I'm seeing. Okay. Uh, that's all I got. Okay. Questions? Uh, recreation report. Do we have anything? Uh, well, just about the festival. Uh, it's ready to go. The permits and inspections have been done and have passed. Uh, everybody's ready to go. Everything's set up. I know the uh, sponsorship is up to, I believe, about 26,000 income altogether, uh, 29 plus. Uh, 
as, uh, as of right now, it is definitely under budget, but definitely pass. Yeah, we'll talk about Good. Okay. Any questions? And we have passes for you to talk about for the park. Thank you. Any questions? Maintenance report. Yeah, a few things. Uh, our Cape annual Cape Seal program is going to start July 29th. That is in the uh, areas of Glen Over subdivision, that whole subdivision, and half of the uh, Kenwood Meadows subdivision. Those are the areas that had the onyx a couple of years ago, and you know, we had the bad luck with it. And this is uh, when they credit us for that. And decided to go ahead and Cape Seal and take that credit for that. So that's going to start July 29th. Uh, Kennedy Sidewalks, as you know, are underway. That's a joint venture between us and Montgomery. The completion date was originally July 31st. Uh, Neiman is doing a great job over there, and it looks like they will be complete next week. So uh, they've done a great job. Bechtel Pavilion, uh, if you've been over there, construction has, has started the columns and beams. We're both installed this week. Uh, roof will start Monday. Uh, we didn't want to bring in all the wood and everything uh, taken up on the ground for the festival. So starting Monday, the roof will go on there. And soon after that, the electric and stone work. Sycamore Road, if you've seen the signs, access uh, will be denied east, eastbound in between Blue Ash and Plainfield. Eastbound will be closed. Monday through December 15th, so uh, that, that whole six months that will only be westbound traffic on that area. Also going to start the installation of the MOT, which means they'll be paving uh, a lane into the park uh, so we can move traffic over uh, to work on the west side of the roundabout. So that starts Monday also. <coughs> Montgomery Road Sidewalks Phase 4 is on the ODOT website for Construction Inspection Administration Services. And we are advertising for the job itself September 12th, 19th, and 26th, and that bids October 4th. Interconnect Phase 2 is going well. Uh, it's supposed to be completed in two weeks. Uh, Capital is the one working on that. <coughs> I also handed out to uh, all the trustees, something from Heitmeyer Farms, uh, you know, we've talked about <clears throat> getting new streets.